find out 9 o'clock uh, and stole y'all thunder. My goodness, it's good to see y'all. How y'all doing online? It's good to see y'all as well. I uh, pray that you are doing well. Um, if y'all could, just if you know people out there in that hallway, just tell them to come on in. Just say, hey, we about to start service. No, actually, start, service started. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Y'all excited to be here this morning? Y'all excited to lift up Jesus? Whoa, y'all excited to lift up Jesus? Okay, I just want to make sure that the, na- the only name that matters is Jesus Christ. And I want to make sure we all on one accord. Um, anybody uh, excited that you're saved? Okay, all right. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm not going to pump a problem, y'all, no more. I'm, we're going to sing, and hopefully we get there. Let's go, let's go, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Yeah.
an awesome God who deserves awesome praise. Watch this. I said in first service, I'll say it again. Regardless of your situation, he's awesome. Kids acting crazy, he's awesome. Just got laid off, he's awesome. Sickness in your body, he's awesome. <laughs> I'm waiting for the people who can testify with me for a little bit. I, I, I know it seems like it is, it's chaotic in this world, but he's awesome. You, you, you when you got up, you, you didn't want to get up this morning, but, but, the, but the, the sun was high in the sky. You, you got up with some aches in your body. With some pains. How about this? It was some bills you couldn't pay just this week. But it's awesome. <laughs> here's, here's why it's awesome. Because he's not limited by anything you're experiencing. He's not hindered by anything that happens. He's not shaken by what goes on in your life. He is so set apart that his holiness we can't even fully experience. But he's so near that he's a, he's a comforter in the time of trouble. <laughs> he's so great that he decided to wake up all these people in this room. He's so massive that he would orchestrate the stars to be in the sky last night yeah, yeah. but orchestrate the moon and the sun to, to switch places right, right. but he's intimate enough yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> to love on you okay y'all y'all yeah I, I i see that y'all y'all really not that experiential that that it don't hit home for you but it hit home for me i'm glad he woke me up but can I, I'll, give you, I'll give you a little bit of something else because y'all deep and sophisticated. Y'all educated people, and that's fine. That's great. But he, he, here's, here's one. He saved your soul. That's as deep and sophisticated as it gets. And if you can't celebrate what God has given in himself, <laughs> all right, let's sing about it. Maybe that'll, that'll help them out because they, they take it a long time. It's all right. It's all right. God, give us a church. Give us a church. Give us a church. Yeah. 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 This is the one we exalt. Here it is. The song says this. Son of man, son of righteousness, king of the earth. For sinners slain, and I was lost in darkness, bound, but you ransomed my heart, and I will say. Used to be lost people in here. I was lost. I was lost in in what did he do? But you wrench of my heart. Now will you sing to him? Come on, let's lift it up. I will.
angels cry. Come on, you are. You're holy, Lord. Come on, acknowledge this holiness. Come on, let's do it together. You are. Do one big choir. Come on, this was heaven sound like. Come on, let's do it. Come on, loud. Come on. You are. I want you to say it like he really is holy. Come on. You are holy. You are holy. You. Y'all in the middle. I give y'all the easy part. Say you. good in this middle section you are I got this the choir section right here Woo. one more time just the voices all the way out you are holy y'all sound mighty good you sound like he's holy come on sing it together yeah holy oh y'all got your part hold on to it hold on to your part y'all ready this y'all part king of kings most high you reign we've done this before we're gonna do it all together come on king of kings most high you reign. them by themselves they sound good don't they come on king of kings hey. let me turn this microphone so they can hear y'all lift your voice and say king of kings stay right there i know we ready we ready all three parts, come on, y'all ready? Say all three parts. Now, y'all can't sing it like he's not holding. You gotta sing it like he really mean it. Come on. Really loud. Don't worry about your note. Just sing the part. Come on, the words are true. Come on. Lift your voice and say holy. You are holy. Holy. <laughs> Let's go, fellas. Let's go. All three parts. No, let's just do it. Come on. All, everybody together. Say you are holy. Say. <laughs> Woo! This is what you're going to do for the rest of your life if you're here. <laughs> this is what you'll do. This is what you'll say. This is what you believe. Lift your voice and say. Because this is what heaven is like. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> Come on, lift your voice. Break the music. Say, you are. You are holy. You are holy. In order to say it, you got to remove your flesh out the way. Come on, say it to him. <laughs> Just a voice. You are holy. 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 But I want you to worship him like he really is holy. Let's go, let's go. Now lift up your voice and give him thanks now. Let's do it together. Let's do it. Let's come on, come on. Give him the fruit of your lips. He's been way too good to you. Come on. He's been way too good to you for you to sit on this one. Give him your best. Come on, let's do it. Yeah. Say you are holy. you do 
Do you pity Pat the Holy One? Do you just give him a, a simple thank you? If he really is truly holy, he should get a little bit more. Uh, watch this. He should get all of it. <laughs> he should get every single bit of it. Until you leave empty, he should have it all. Come on, I want you to lift up. Here's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my. I know we didn't practice in this key. I'm sorry. Here's my worship. All of my worship. Father, receive. Take the posture of humility. All of my. You're humbly asking him to receive it. Come. Here's my. All of my. It's more than lift surface. It's lifestyle. Come on. Receive my. Say all of my. We're not going to go to full song. We're just going to go right here. Come on. Here's my worship. All of my. Father, receive my All of my Just the voices. Here's my worship. Would you give it to him now? All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my Can we surrender to him in this moment? Here's my worship. Come on, raising your hands is a sign of surrenderance. Come on, let's do it together. Oh, we see Let's praise the Lord for our worship team today. We ought to be also grateful to be in a place where we can freely worship the Lord. As we transition now in worship, uh, there's another way we can worship. We can worship through our giving. If you can follow me on the uh, call and response, who is the owner of all things?
I give it to anyone I please. All right. Who provides for us? And how are we to respond? And how are we to give? three ways we can give. As you can see, our hospitality team is passing around the baskets. Uh, if you're in the sanctuary, you can give that way. You can also go online, visit epiphanyfellowship.org slash give and follow the instructions there. And those of you who have the uh, Church Center app, you can go to the Church Center app and uh, go to the uh, give tab to give. We want to welcome a very special group of people right now, our first time visitors. If you're visiting Epiphany Fellowship for the first time, would you please stand? Our first time visit, amen, there we go. We got some in the balcony, some in the back, amen. Just remain standing. Epiphany Fellowship, if you could just uh, keep a memory of uh, these first time visitors. Usually there was a time when we'd come and greet you right now and give you a hug and dap you up, but um, with the COVID, we're gonna go ahead and uh, just keep an eye on you. And uh, as, uh, as Epiphany Fellowship visitors, uh, not that way, in a loving way, keep an eye on you. And uh, we want to greet them with the Spirit of Christ uh, before you leave this place. If you want to learn more about uh, Epiphany Fellowship, you can text. Uh, it's right behind me on the screen. Text 94,000 to Epiphany, uh, or sorry, uh, text CONNECT to 94,000. Thank you so much. And welcome to Epiphany Fellowship yeah. today. Uh, if you do uh, come back every first Sunday, uh, we have what's called Discover Epiphany. If you want to find out about more and actually speak to some, uh, someone, there will be a, a pastor available in the uh, office. It's just off the sanctuary there, right after service. That's every first Sunday, so if you come back next week, uh, please join us uh, if you have any questions at Discover Epiphany. I just have a, a few announcements today. Uh, the feature announcement today is kind of this gear I'm representing here. How about that? Equip You. All right. Equip You is uh, starting up. When is it starting up? You know when it's starting up? Tuesday. Tuesday. The launch is Tuesday. We also have some other gear. We got a school store. Epiphany has a school store, so we got water bottles, T-shirts, sweatshirts. Um, we're really excited about the launch coming up. Epiphany Fellowship, is a, it's a different world, and we want to be equipped to live in it. This Tuesday, we're launching the uh, Equip You, our new Christian education initiative. This program is designed to help every member of our congregation to help you grow in the faith, know God, and live for him. Equip You will take place every Tuesday in the fall. Remember, you must sign up for classes at Tuesday's launch. That's this Tuesday. Please register as well. Get on the, uh, on the app and register to come out so we have an accurate count. Why? Because we got food. How about that? And uh, we also want to know for the classes, you'll get a chance to register for the classes. Uh, there'll be two classes starting up uh, this fall, so please, uh, please register before you, uh, before you come. There's also going to be a step show at the launch, and you can bring the whole family. You can learn more about Equip You at epiphanyfellowship. There you go. Somebody's happy about that step show. Um, you can uh, learn more about the Equip You at epiphanyfellowship.org slash equip you. We might have, uh, is there a video? Just give me a nod. Is there a video of somebody? There is? All right, cool. Let's uh, take a look. Equip You is coming. Equip You is coming. Equip You is coming. Well, Equip You is here. We are so excited. Come on out. Equip You is coming. Equip You is coming. You is coming. Equip You is on the way. Hey everybody, Equip You is coming. You should think of this as seminary meets a different world. It's going to be a phenomenal time in the Lord. The launch is going to be Tuesday, September 27th from 6.30 to 9 o'clock. And we are going to just do an orientation. We're going to get hyped. We're going to get excited to study God's word together as a community. See you there. Equip You is coming. Amen, amen. Man, you excited about Equip You? Yeah, especially that last one. I like that. Who was that last person that did that one? She was all right. I like that one. Uh, just a few brief announcements. 
Uh, mark your calendars, the PIF Kids will be hosting Fall Fest. Looking forward to Fall Fest on uh, October 29th and 30th. More details are coming soon on that. Uh, I talked about the, uh, let's see, that one. I talked about Discover Epiphany. That's coming up. And if you're headed to Salt's Movie Night, that's this afternoon, Salt's Movie Night, The Woman King. Please note that the time in the movie has changed to 2.45. I think that's, is that a new thing? 2.45? Okay. 2.45. Please get there uh, as soon as you can. I think uh, that's the last of the announcements. I'll go ahead and uh, um, we can go before the Lord. Dear Lord, we just thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord, for just, the, again, this opportunity to worship you, to praise you. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for um, all the opportunities we have to learn more about you and grow in community. We pray, Lord, that you would just uh, bless these gifts that we've given. Pray, Lord, they'd be used for the betterment of your kingdom. And all that we do today, we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And stand on your feet if you can. now and then we need to uh, recalibrate. We allow the busyness of life, difficulty, struggle, kind of knock us off a little bit. And it happens, it happens, it happens. We're, we're, we're human, right? But I think what we need to do is we have to <laughs> realign ourselves to the will of God, to the purpose that he's called us for. How about this? We need to realign ourselves to his people. Press in. Fellowship with one another. Because again, life happens. <laughs> Sometimes we, we stray a little bit to the left or to the right. But what's beautiful is we have a consistent God. That in times of need or difficulty or even when he reminds us that we need to be recalibrated he's there he's there to comfort us but he's there to challenge us to correct us to, to push us to love one another sometimes we put ourselves on pedestals we create many idols for ourselves. But there's no one who can reign supremely like God does. I don't care what preacher, what potentate, what, what leader you, you develop. You can read all the leadership books. You are still a terrible leader. You are a fallen man. But there's one who reigns forever and will never fail and don't need a book to teach him how to reign. Don't need a leadership one-on-one class. Doesn't need a crash course on how to work with people. But our heart's disposition should be, Lord, I snatched down every idol in my life. Because the only one who really matters and who really needs to have full capacity of my life is you. So this is, when you sing this song, I want you to reflect on these words. That says, something simple says, You are our hearts, one desire, thirsty for you. Thirsty for you. Yes, you are our hearts. One desire. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Let's sing it together. You are our hearts. One desire. And if it's not here yet, you need to make it this your priority. Come on. Thirsty for you. Thirsty for you. This requires humility. You are our one desire. One desire. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Let's do it. Y'all got the words now. You are our heart. 
one desire with thirsty for you anybody thirsty for him today come on thirsty for you we want nothing else but you love one desire only you can satisfy this next part just says this will you dwell here dwell here you can move whatever's in your way, whatever took your place, dwell here. Lord, dwell here. You can move whatever's in your and whatever. Come on, said you are our heart. One design. We're thirsty for you, Lord. We're thirsty for you. You are, yeah. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Come on, let's say, dwell here, dwell here, right here. Whatever to be our place, dwell here, here in our hearts, oh God, said here in our minds you can move, come on, let's do it, whatever.
just the voices. to him some of the stuff you're dealing with would, would, would you would be able to get through it a little bit better if you just know how to dwell and if you know how to draw near see if you learn the secret of drawing near to God your life will change some stuff may not change but you will in the midst of that struggle you will then but then sometimes him dwelling there will break some yokes and some bondages and give you some breakthroughs that you didn't know you needed but sometimes dwelling with God isn't even about what he's going to do. Sometimes it's about being with him. Just being with him. One of the greatest eschatological realities is God says, the Bible says, and the tabernacle of God was among men. And we will just dwell there. Because see, there's a point in eternity where we won't need breakthroughs anymore. <laughs> and all we'll have the ability to do uninhibitedly is to enjoy the presence of God. I don't know about you, but I can't wait until this old crusty world 
and everything that comes with it is gone and it's rolled back like a scroll and Jesus has returned and we get to enjoy God without any barriers. How many of you can't wait to then? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm excited on a lot of levels. Really feel good about where we are as a church. I really feel good about you. Um, I, I just feel a different spirit in our church these days and um, just a receptivity and the way people are jumping in and serving. Uh, new people are just hungry and, you know, we, we got babies being born everywhere and uh, seeing strong singles everywhere. Y'all ain't going to say nothing right there. We just got good folk, good staff, good team, great things going on. Well, another great thing is like, like if I was in a South Fin to go on, is equip you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, tomorrow, I mean, Tuesday, don't come up here tomorrow, Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday at 6 o'clock, we're going to have a great time, 6, 6.30, come on up. It's going to be a great time. We're going to get some food, you're going to eat, have a good time, and we're going to have the inauguration of Equip You. And I am excited for everything that's happening with that. I want to give a big shout out to Dr. Sarita Lyons for putting everything together. Amen. 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 Y'all can do better than that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And so um, we're, we're about to enter into um, a great season of community. Somebody say community. It's going to be great. And so I'm excited about it and looking forward to God's grace. So I'm going to keep my wife lifted as tomorrow she does her last chemo uh, therapy session. So keep her lifted as tomorrow's the last session. And um, believing God for healing, restoration. And how many of y'all know you should believe God for healing? You should. You should. And restoration. Amen. Amen. Well, we're still in our series on the rebrand. Um, has this series been okay for y'all? Yeah. Amen. Rebrand, rebrand. Today, let's, let's dig into 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Let's read together. 1, 2, 3. Read. Amen, amen, amen for our time together as we uh, work through our series. Today I want to talk about rebranding, preaching, and teaching. Rebranding, teaching, and preaching. Let's get in the word. Father God, um, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for truth. Um, truth is not just the information you give us, but truth is a person. That person's name is Jesus Christ. For you said you are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by you. And so, God, we don't want to be like Herod when we hear from you and say, what is truth? But, Lord God, we want to know truth, and we want that truth to set us free. Not us talking about our truth and all of that kind of stuff, uh, but your truth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, God, our strength and our redeemer, in whom we trust in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Everybody agree that's it? You may be seated. You may be seated. Rebranding, preaching, and teaching. One of the um, things that um, I, you know, as you raise kids, and you know, I, I have a, 
I have a a a twenty year old son, and he's away at college. And you know, as you as as you are raising your kids, um, your greatest kind of angst comes when they have to leave the house. It's kind of like a blessing and a challenge at the same time. It's a blessing because they out. <laughs> time to go. Amen. Transition. It's a challenge though. Because you're wondering all the time how they're doing. You're wondering how they're processing your child rearing. You're, you're, you're wondering whether or not you did enough. Do you wonder or not if your faults have gotten away way of maybe a truth that they need becomes missing practically in their life because of something you did. But, but there's nothing. That's why the Bible says Uh, There is no greater joy than to see your children walking in truth. Uh, 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 um, um, That that, that verse is about spiritual children mainly, but it also can apply to natural children. And and, and, and the the crazy thing about this is my greatest uh, heaviness, like Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, is it says Paul went through shipwrecking, he went through sleepless nights, he was stoned and left for dead, but he said his greatest... And most heavy burden was for how churches are doing. As a pastor, as your pastor, one of my heaviest burdens is how you're doing. And one of the main how you're doings is really surrounding how your discernment is. Are you ingesting truth or are you just coming to church? In other words, in other words is this really... Is Christ being formed in you, and, and, and can you grow, are you growing on a, a systematic trajectory towards what it means to look like Jesus, but also use what you get, or do you come here to like settle your conscience, then you roll out? One, one of the things, the, the goal of this message today is for you to learn how to discern what's healthy truth and what's unhealthy. That's my goal today. I hope you say amen, but if you don't, if you ingest it, I'll be happier. But but I'm letting you know the goal of today is I I want want God to rebrand in you what you allow yourself to ingest. I, I want you to be biblically snobbish. I want you to be a theological neatnik. If you will, I want you to be begin to begin to not tolerate certain things anymore, even if it's good applicably. If it's not good theologically and biblically, then 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 applicably don't matter if it doesn't root itself in truth. I'm by myself today. It's okay. I'll preach myself happy today. But 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 I, but I, but I really I really want you to begin to have standards. I'm getting ahead of myself. I want you to have standards for what you demand to allow your heart and your mind to ingest. Particularly around the the, the most dangerous poison to get is a sermon that is poison but it's using Jesus' name for its own agenda. That, that's, that is scary because if, if you don't have a spirit of discernment on your life, if you don't have a spirit of discernment on your life, one of the things that's going to happen, if you don't have a spirit of discernment on your life, what will happen is, is you will take everything in and you won't have any discriminatory disposition to use a biblical grid and a biblical worldview as a mechanism to know what should I eat, what should I not eat. In other words, I want you to have an allergic reaction to mess. That's what I want you to do. I want, I want you to have an allergic reaction. Somebody say, let's go hear this. You say, no, nah, I'm allergic to that. You know, I, 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 you know, you know, you know, I, I, I like it when the waitress come to you and, the, you know, when you go somewhere to eat and they say, are there any allergies? You know, you know, um, you need to go to, you need to listen to messages wondering if there are any allergic things that's in it that could affect your life. Because in today's preaching world, we live in a world in man-centered communication. Man-centered communication. Now, it's very hard When something may apply to you and you're drawn into it and then poison is thrown on the back end of it. Uh, Because listen, listen, 
a, a, a rat poisoning is 99% food. The 1% is just enough to kill you. And so we live in a world of man-centered communication. If it's about me and it applies to me, then that's how I should have my life focused. But, but you only, many of us only like messages that are individualistic. We'll talk about that. Even our worship songs are man-centered. God, do this for me. Uh, you, you love me. You, 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 you're, you're, I'm the biggest thought on your mind. Where is that in the Bible? That the biggest thought on God's mind is humans. But you have to be careful of that. Y'all got quiet on that part because y'all think about some songs. You're like, dang, I got to get that out. Our songs today are more about who we are than who God is. Why? Because songs are proclamations. How do I know that? Because Paul says it twice, he puts it in Ephesians 5, and he puts it in Colossians 3. He says, admonish, that's preaching, one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual psalms. Why does it say admonish? Because songs are supposed to be artistic, theological therapy through music. And so that's why art can be dangerous, because art can turn you off if the vibe is right. See, some of y'all need to get beyond vibe and understand truth. Because, see, you're like, I'm, so I like the vibe of that. I like the vibe of that. Whoa, I like the vibe. But, but the, the enemy likes to, now, that don't mean God don't have a vibe because he created all that. But the issue is the enemy will molest you with a vibe to get some information into you that's poison. But you got to be like, oh, I like the vibe. What the heck are they saying? Me and my wife, you know, we, when we're on the road, we, it, we just play music, old music. And we played one song, and you know now, with your phone, you can push the little joint and see what the words say. We pulled out this one song, and we used to be like, uh, don't, 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 we love the song. We look, if I said, babe. Because you know when you're a kid, you just mumble stuff. You don't really know the words. You just like the vibe. And we look, we was like, we wilding. And our kids in the back just learning the songs and going like this. And we like, ah, oh, that, that. And turn it off. <laughs> and so we don't want to be, we, we're not, we're not, we, we don't want to be uh, charmed by the snake charmer. You know, play, while he plays it, we just, we just come up out of the basket and we're just hypnotized by foolishness. I want you to learn discernment. Somebody say discernment. So Paul, talking to his spiritual son, begins to talk to him in his, one of his last written letters before he gets to Caesar and he's about to get beheaded. And before he gets beheaded and he, he writes this letter asking him to come visit him in prison. It's crazy that that's in the Bible. And, and his last word to him is he wants to talk to him about how to handle God's word. Out of all the stuff he could have talked about, he could have talked about character, he could have talked about his family, he could have talked about, he talked about, but what he Talk to him about his last message to him was about properly handling God's word. Because if we understand proper handling of God's word and how important the handling of God's word is, when done right, everything falls into place. That's why you got to be careful of worship heavy churches with little word. It has to be both spirit and truth. We shouldn't be fighting with spirit or truth because the spirit brings truth. I'm by myself. <laughs> I'm by myself. So, so, so we, we, of course, you, you know, we, we want to we wanna make sure that we're committed to God's end. So I got one thing, one point, one point only. One point. Y'all listening to me, right? Um. Our commitment to the word of God must never change no matter how the world changes. Our commitment to the word of God must never change no matter how the world changes. He says in verse 1, he says, I solemnly charge you before God. This is a hefty statement. Because Paul is literally acting like Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Spirit 
are in front of him and he's standing there at a podium while Timothy is taking a knee, looking up at him with the triune God behind Paul. And he says, I charge you before God. This charge is so heavy because it's a charge that helps Timothy to understand the weight of being a biblical communicator. Ah, Y'all looking at me funny. That's why you shouldn't become a teacher so fast. The, the Bible says in James chapter 3, verse 1, let not many of you become teachers, for they incur the stricter judgment. And so that's why when somebody tell me they called the ministry, I said, if you can do anything else, do it. But if you can't help becoming the ministry, do it. Why? Because being called, somebody, people always ask me, how do you know you call when not walking in what God told you to do feels like disobedience? And so, and, so, and so here he solemnly charges him. So the, the, he wants Timothy to feel the brevity of what it means to be charged with what it means to handle truth well. He said, who is going to judge the living and the dead? So he, know, he said, you know he's going to judge you. Whether you die or whether you're living, he's going to judge you, family. He says, because of his appearing and his kingdom. He says, kurutsan tan lagan. I love it. Preach the word. Preach the word. He, 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 when, when he tells him to preach the word, he, he, he harrows the great eternal statement. He said, Kruzan Tan Lagan. He said, I want you to expose God's people to everything. Everything that I said, Timothy, I don't want you to be afraid of any text in the Bible. I want you to trust that God's spirit is going to meet you in every text that you step your foot in. I want you to carusan tan la God. I want you to preach. Guess what? I don't want you to preach politics, Timothy. I don't want you to preach your favorite uh, uh, acumen. I don't want you to preach personal preferences. I don't want you to preach feminism and womanism. Help me out. I don't want you to teach Afrocentrism. I don't want you to preach right-wing politics. I don't want you to preach left-wing politics. I don't want you to teach toxic masculinity. I don't want you to teach unredeemed patriarchy. Preach the word. Preach the word. He wants him to preach the word. Because if you take preaching out of the church, the church is no longer a church. People, people say church was real high today. We worshiped the whole time and there was no preaching. You ain't had church. Because <laughs> listen, you know you make a decision whether or not you're going to go to a church based on the preaching. Oh, don't look at me funny. You, 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 you understand what I'm saying? So, so when we talk about preaching and preaching the word, if you take it out, you know, you lose an ingredient of church. Preaching is so important that when Jesus came on the scene, it says, and he came about preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Uh, 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 preaching is so uh, 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 important that in Acts chapter 6, um, um, the apostle Peter and the apostles were serving tables, and not that serving tables was wrong, but they got to the point to where they weren't able to spend as much time studying. They weren't able to make sure that they had their, 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 their I's dotted and their T's crossed, and they said, it is not good for us to neglect the word of God in prayer to wait tables. So we're going to appoint some people to wait the tables because that's important. But if we get rid of the word and we just wait tables, we're just a social ministry. But if we have preaching and uh, 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 outreach, it's word and deed. You know, um, if you take any ingredient out, if particularly preaching, it's no longer church. Listen, I, I, I remember, uh, uh, you know, I, I, may have, I told you all this story before. Went over to some people's house. They gave us a good meal. And um, meal was decent, and um, no shade, no shade, no shade, no shade. And um, they had dessert. I was like, "Oh, what you got?" He said, "We got pound cake." I'm like, "Oh, you know, I'm a I'll, back then. I was a pound cake connoisseur. I had no pound cake in a while, but I was a pound cake connoisseur. And um, I like it because when it come out hot, it's got the crusty top." Without the sugar, no sugar crisps, just natural born crustiness. And they cut it, and don't put no haagen besides it, where them haagen just leans into the pound cake and just ministers to it, right? But they just gave me the pound cake. Me and my wife took a piece and ate it. And I don't like when you go over people's house and they put something before you and they don't eat, but they just look at you as you eat. 
in which you putting pressure not on me, it's putting the pressure on you. <laughs> Understand what I'm saying? And so, and so, so I started eating, and I was like, I said, how is it? I said, man, it's different, you know? Because see, when you're in somebody else's house, you can't tell them it's terrible. You got to be diplomatic. Amen. So I said, this, you know, it's interesting. They said, oh, you, you got it, huh? I said, sure did. <laughs> and she said, well, well, guess what we did? We put applesauce in. We didn't put in butter. I said, I, in my spirit, I was like, huh? I don't want no vegan pound cake, dog. Some stuff you need to just have. You don't need the vegan and gluten-free. Give me, because I've been saving calories, give me pound cake. But, I, but, but I'm thinking to myself, it's called pound cake, not applesauce cake. What makes pound cake pound cake is a pound of butter is put in it. But as soon as you take the, the butter out, it becomes something else. When you take preaching out of the church, it becomes something else. It becomes something else. So what are the ingredients of the church? What are some ingredients? Um, some ingredients of the church, you see them up there. Preaching and teaching is an ingredient. Worship is an ingredient. Fellowship is an ingredient. Discipleship is an ingredient. These are things that makes the church the church. Administration, Christian education, evangelism, leadership, and generosity. This is what makes a church a church family. And so we, we want to make sure, that's why we try to go out of our way to, 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 as, 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 as leaders here to make sure, that's why Equip You is so important because we want you to have all of the ingredients of what makes a church and also baptism and communion makes a church the church. Then he says, preach the word. He wants him to preach the word. He says in verse 15 through 17 of chapter 3, he says, And you know that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which you were able, which are able to give you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ. All scripture is theopnutos, breathed out or inspired by God and is, able, is profitable for what? Teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So listen to what we say, family. Yes. So listen, God's word is central to what we preach. God's word isn't the springboard, but the source. God's word isn't the icebreaker, it's the builder. God's word isn't, the, isn't a good idea, but a God reality. I like the way the writers of the Bible talk about the word of God, their respect level for the word of God. You have Psalm 119.9 where David says, how can a young man or woman keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. Psalm 119.11, I have treasured your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 119.105 says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light into my pathway. I love how, Psalm, how David in Psalm chapter 1 verse 2 he says, instead, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditate on it day and night. And he is like a tree planted beside flowing streams and that bears its fruit in its season. Well, listen, listen, you should have a love affair with God through loving being in the word. Yeah. Being in the word, and you should demand that your preachers preach the word. You should demand it. You should, it, shouldn't, it should be a given that the word is preached. James says, receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. In other words, it's not just you hearing the word, but it getting inside of you and sticking to your ribs like a good stew. I wish I had some help in the second gathering. That you would demand truth. Yes. You know, um... When Paul says the word, he means I want you preaching the gospel, the commands of Jesus, and the sum total of all of the word of God. In other words, I want you to preach the whole counsel of God, and, and, and all of it, from the rooter to the tutor family. Preach it all. You, you shouldn't be afraid of nothing. Get in all of that stuff because you will become deficient if everything's not given to you. Let me see if I can make it plain. Somebody went, uh, told their doctor, you know, they was dealing with dizziness and dealing with insomnia and fatigue. And the doctor said, give me some blood work. 
we went in, do some blood work. He said, before you come see me, do some blood work. Got the blood work done, went to the doctor. When they got to the doctor, the doctor, um, the doctor said, um, he said, oh, I already know what's going on with you. You, you, you. The reason why you're dealing with all of these symptoms of issues is because you have iron and vitamin D deficiency. Now, the person was confused because this person said, I eat a lot. I, how in the world can I have vitamin D a, a, a deficiency and, um, and, and, and iron deficiency? He said, because you don't have a well-balanced diet. You may eat a lot of things, but you're not eating things that gives you all the nutrients that you need. And so we have to be like that. We have to listen, because when you get older in, in physical body, you feel everything. Oh, somebody, when you, when you get above 40, 45 years old, that cheeseburger don't sit right no more. Listen, you wake up and you realize one of your feet bigger than the other. When you dragging one along, you're like, what in the world is wrong with me? Ankles hurt. Why? Because the older and more mature you get, you're more sensitive to things that you weren't sensitive to when you were younger. Or when somebody would hear me. No, when you feel everything and you know what you're, and when you begin knowing those deficiencies, you begin eating things. And I know in our community, I know in our community, we got a, we, we, you know, we, we got a whole idea, you know, on your grits, do you want butter and, and salt or do you want sugar? No matter what you put on grits, grits has no nutritional value. It may fill you up, but it has, look on the back of it, when you go down the street, it has nothing to give to you. All it does is make you feel like you've ate something, but doesn't give you anything. See, we need to, we need to be rid of all of these donut, ice cream, and cupcake sermons that these cats are teaching, and that you like to like, and that you like to share. Listen, you need something that's going to stir up your soul to love and good deeds. You need a word that's sharper than any two-edged sword, and sharpens down between the soul and the spirit. You need God's word in your life. You need to be, you need to have milk and you need to have meat. You need to have it all. Somebody say, I got to have it all. You need well-rounded spiritual diet. What does that look like? What does that look like? You need book studies. You need doctrine. You need topical. You need felt needs and you need cultural issues. When I preach, that's how I develop series. I develop series <clears throat> from these five ways. Now, everybody likes felt need, but, too many, but you can't live on felt needs. Because my job as your pastor isn't just to meet you where you are, but it's to take you beyond where you are. It's my job. And so felt needs after a while, you're coming through your season. You're about to go through it. God's about to give you a breakthrough. Man, God's going to put you in your purpose. Man, God is going to do your dreams. and or Just all of that all the time. That stuff is candy cane work. That's candy cane. But most of the stuff out there that has all of the, all of the, uh, it's, the it's the stuff that's centered on you. But the stuff that forces you to grow get two likes. But you, you, you have to demand, listen, you have to demand to learn how to become a good hearer. You, you, you got you to, see, let, let me see if I can make a plan because y'all still looking at me. <clears throat> you know, one of my, uh, uh, listen, I, I remember people, uh, you know, people talk about Floyd Mayweather is a boring boxer. But if you understand boxing and you're looking at what he's doing, it's unreal what he's doing. Because he know he he'll 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 put his fist on your forehead like this, and you he's like, what is he doing? And what he's doing is he's developing a cadence on you that's an off cadence, that's off beat. And what he's doing is he's about to bring the right hand to hit you. He'll go to your stomach like this, and he'll just he'll just go like this to your stomach. And what he's doing is he's training your muscles to flinch like this over and over and over again. And then the next round, when you got used to it, he busts you right in your mouth. People look at Tim Duncan and think he's the most boring player ever. But them rings ain't boring, are they? Yeah, them rings ain't boring. Yeah, because he understands the fundamentals. You need to master the fundamentals so that you can know how to hear well God's word. You got to, that's why we're doing equip you. You have to learn how to master the fundamentals. If someone says something ignorant about salvation, you need to be like, hmm. Hmm, where does it say we can lose our salvation in the Bible? Because the Bible says, all that the Father gives to me shall come to me, and the one that comes to me, I shall certainly not cast out. 
But, but if it's called eternal life, how can you lose it? That means it wasn't eternal, it was temporal. Because he said, and these things are written to you in order that you may know that you have eternal life. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son has life. You got to master the fundamentals. Got to know some fundamentals and you got to demand it. He said, do this in season. I got to get ooh, all of this. I got 20 pages. I love y'all. In season and out of season. He said, Timothy, when you don't feel like it, do it. When they don't want to hear it, do it. When they want to hear it, do it. Because there'll come times when you get sick of dealing with people's responses to you preaching the whole counsel of God. Woo! I can, if I could just be pastoral, terrified, I could tell you some stories about people. But I'm not. So I asked Noah. Noah preached for 150 years it was going to rain and the only church he planted was his family <laughs> listen that, that, that's gangster a hundred years not a hundred years that's too proper a hundred and fifty years listen Samuel went and anointed another king while one was still in office now that's gangster. <laughs> Jeremiah preached by himself when all the other prophets was preaching. Oh, you, you're going to get a breakthrough. He said, nah, God about to destroy everything. <laughs> See, you got to have that type of thing. But then, it, but then he says, he said, the word not only does that, it not, it not only should be done in season, out of season, but how do you do it in season, out of season? What are you doing in season, out of season? The first thing you do in season, out of season is number one, Correct. It's funny that he puts encouragement third. It's interesting. The first thing that he says the word is for is correction. The word means to convict, to scrutinize, and to examine carefully in order to bring someone into the light. Woo! <laughs> That's beautiful. Because many times we don't know when we're getting corrected. It's the Holy Spirit trying to bring your crazy butt into the light. <laughs> oh, God, help us. It means to express strong disapproval. It's beautiful, right? But then it means rebuke. He puts correction and rebuke first. Look at how the Bible do. Now listen, when Bible puts stuff in order, it has a, it, it, it's interesting. When it, when it, when it says similar to correct, it means to reprove, to admonish. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to like this one. It says to warn forcefully. <laughs> now what does that look like? It looks like David and Nathan being really good friends. That's what it looks like. And you love your boy a lot. But guess what? He went to his, his boy and told him to his face that he was a liar, a murderer, and an adulterer to a king who could kill you. But guess what? God's, the heftiness of God's word was more important in, as a, of an oracle for Nathan than his friendship with David. Listen, it's, it's, it's so, so, so this is beautiful. You, you see that. You see Micaiah, you know, he go in and tell them all of the kings going to get killed. You go in this war without God's permission. Listen, he told Saul, Samuel told Saul, the kingdom about to be torn from your hands. Listen, you got to have some, listen, man, you got to have some fearless, God committed preaching over your life, family. But also it's for encouragement. Because the word for encouragement it is, is an interesting word. It's the, it's the Greek word parakaleo. Now, the, 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 the word parakaleo is a, in another form, is the word for paraclete, which is used for the Holy Spirit, who comes alongside of you to pick you up and move you along when you don't want to move. <laughs> That's encouragement. encouragement. Encouragement is the crutch for the broken. 
What, what, what it does is it holds you up. Uh, 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 encourage me. My son broke his foot and they put this cast, this thing over his foot. And even though he's in pain until it heals, it makes him feel like he can walk and deters the pain even though there's something broken on the inside of his foot. Let me tell you something. When you get encouragement in preaching, you can be going through difficult situations and you can be going through a healing process. But what a good word of encouragement will do is it will make sure that when you hit the floor and when you make a walk, the pain of your brokenness isn't filled even though it's getting healed and the brokenness is still there you're still able to keep walking you're still keep able to keep talking you're able to still keep moving you're able to keep loving you're able to keep praising encouragement there's stuff like times of grief loss suffering confusion need for direction <clears throat> Reminded someone that their steps are ordered. Yeah, <laughs> yeah see, 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 I can't wait. So we, 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 we still have a young church, but having some more and more older people, seasoned older people. Because I don't know if you've ever been encouraged by an old saint. Because in those varicose veins are seasons. <laughs> seasons of, it may look a little green, that's just seasoning from Jesus. And, and, and those seasons, and what, and what you, they say very, very stout things in very short, studded statements. <clears throat> and, and you don't know that those simple cliches is packed with so much truth, so much God took me over, so much he brought me through and made a way out of no way. You know, they'll tell you, you, you you'll be like this, how you doing, uh, 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 brother, brother Jones? Just keep on walking. Just keep on walking with him. Hey, you know I've been walking with him a long time. Keep on walking with him, young man. Keep on walking with him, young man. But what he's saying under there is I've been through hell and high water and I'm still here. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord. <clears throat> That's why you need encouragement through the word of God. And he says, guess what you, he said, you got to do this. Now, this is the hard part for a preacher. This is the hard part for the preacher. The preacher has to correct, have to rebuke, have to encourage in season and out of season. Now, but he gives character to how you do it. With great patience. Help me, Lord! <laughs> and teaching. Oh, the hardest thing about preaching and teaching is seeing people's maturity gaps and wanting more for them than they want for themselves. And you telling them the truth, they acknowledge the truth, but they act like you said a lie. Whew, I'm by myself. But what it says here is you, you got to be patient and teach. Whew. See, preaching is easier than teaching. Because preaching exposes. Teaching explains. <laughs> see, see, it's easy to preach something and leave. <sighs> Help me. But teaching has to be patient with the frustration of looking someone's brokenness in the eye and you have to walk them through feeding them. You literally are like a parent who's at the high chair and you have to put the bib around their neck and you have to begin to feed them. The oh, you're not ready for this. And you got to adjust your feeding methods. That's what teach. Oh, I wish I had. Listen, when you got to, all my teachers understand, you got to adjust your teaching methods based on what they can hold in their mouth. And then you got to put it back in their mouth when they spit it out because you know if they don't eat, they're going to die. Patience. That means, know what that means? Is that when you preaching and teaching somebody else, God ain't just working on them past the guests. He working on you. Because <laughs> listen, 
when you, when you see, because when, because when you really love people and you see what they can be, you get frustrated with their willingness to stay where they are. That comes from preaching somebody and helping somebody. But what, but what you have to do is you have to remember this. You didn't get what you were overnight. Somebody was patient with your stupid, little crazy, little out of your mind, little trifling, whoremongling, little self, when you ain't want to hear a word, but somebody was praying for you, somebody was loving on you, somebody was enduring for you, somebody was travailing for you, so stop trying to rush people to grow when you know where you are, you ain't get there overnight, because if it had not been... It says, this Dr. Sarita, it says great patience. It, it didn't say patience. He said, you're going to need something else. We're going to have to upgrade that a little bit. Great patience and teaching. Um, and one of the ways you know where church is is when leadership <clears throat> has to make a hard decision. Y'all quiet. And when the leadership has to make a hard decision, and they did it biblically, but you're more connected to the person versus God's principles. I, I remember when we had to do a church discipline case recently, and we removed the person because it was hurting the church. And I, I'm gonna say this loud because I'm, I'm I, I gotta teach y'all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now. <clears throat> One of, one, of our, one of our small groups hit me up, and the people who were leading the group at the time was facilitating everybody else's frustration with the decision that the elders had made. They called me in the midst of life group to give them church, scriptures on church discipline because we're struggling with the decision in front of the life group. Y'all looking at me funny, huh? Y'all like, what in the world? I'm not trying to put people out there, but I'm saying, but what hurt me about it? is that they didn't have the biblical worldview because it was clouded because they had a relationship with the person that we had to remove and they knew the person was wrong, but because they didn't in commit themselves to what the word was saying, they made, they demonized us versus dealing with the issue that the person need to have. And they didn't understand when you facilitate helping a person to remain in fellowship when they need to be handed over, you actually enable them to be in their unrepentance longer. But you, you claim you love them more than us. You can't if you're still facilitating them knowing they're wilding. See, we talking, that's what I'm talking about, this sermon. I got to close this sermon. I'm done. I got more, but I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. Oh, God, the people that I preached at the Pentecostal church the other day, they let me preach like, uh, they just like, go. <laughs> verse three, verse three. We only got through two verses. I'm sorry. Verse three. Now listen to what it says here. This is, to me, one of the linchpin kind of scary texts in the New Testament. Because it says, for the time will come when people, talking about the church people, not the world, people that call themselves Christians and sing hallelujah, will not tolerate are you serious the word tolerate means they won't endure they, they, they won't have any self restraint they'll accept falsehood as valid in other words they won't tolerate sound doctrine the word for uh, sound doctrine, the word for sound is the word we get our word hygiene from. It means to have a clean bill of health. In other words, having what's in you that helps you uh, to maximize that. So in other words, we say we don't want to tolerate sound doctrine. Dealing with truth and hard words from God. We are in a time where people refuse to hear the whole counsel, family. 
People want to take certain things out of the Bible. They want to use what's called trajectory hermeneutics. It's a progressive ideology of hermeneutics, which believes that God, God's, our interpretation of the Bible is dated. And so it needs to be upgraded in light of the issues that we're dealing with today because the Bible isn't timeless. It has to be reinterpreted to adjust to the way things are now versus saying, no, the world has changed and the word has never changed because my Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away before one jot and tittle of God's word will pass away. I, I, I got to get out of here. But one of the things that you got to be understanding of is people's appointment processes has to do with their preaching and teaching. Mm. See, if a person went and wasn't sent, that's a red flag. If they're doing ministry without covering and connectivity, you need to be cautious. <laughs> Help me today. Why? Because the cat in this text named Timothy, Paul and Barnabas were appointed <laughs> to go preach. I'm almost done. And he, they were appointed to preach in Acts 13, went to preach through Acts 14, went to Iconium, Lister, and Derby. They preached the gospel. Timothy got saved. They left later on, went back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem letter gets done. Paul and Barnabas splits up latter part of chapter 15. Acts chapter 16, verse 1, he goes back to Lystra because he wants to encourage the churches. When he gets there, the leaders were like, Paul, we're so glad to see you, but it's a young buck in the ministry. Shorty an animal. Shorty an animal, Paul. Dude, his grandmama and his mom taught him the sacred scriptures of redemptive history from Genesis to Malachi all the way up. And so when he got saved over in Acts 14, when y'all came the first time, boom, he ended up, all of that stuff was already downloaded, but Christ made it more clear and God's hand is on him. And Paul said, where's Shorty at? Let me get Shorty. And so Paul started chopping it up with Timothy. He said, well, so how's Christ seen in Exodus? He said, boom, 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 boom. He said, how's he seen in Malachi? Boom, 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 boom. How's he seen in Isaiah? Boom, 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 boom. Where do you see, what's Isaiah 53 point? It points to the fact that he was Bruce, five, five. He said, oh, shoot, Paul said, um, Shorty, how old are you, 16? Oh, he rolling with me. He rolling with me. He rolling with me. And guess what? Timothy submitted himself. He didn't start an Instagram page. He didn't become a thought leader, a life coach. He got his behind up under spiritual authority. He got up under some authority. And, and, and what he did is what he submitted. He knew all them scriptures. He knew all that Bible, but he had the humility to get up under some authority. You can tell, you can tell when someone is preaching if they have accountability. Because I tell you what, if I say something stupid, I got spiritual father coming after me, friends and elders. I can't just say what I want to say. And that's why I want you all to become, I'm done. I got a lot more, I'm done. Let me just close this thing out. My desire for you all, my desire for you all, he tells Timothy to be faithful. That's what we're called to do. But what I want you to do is I want you all to become connoisseurs. What is a connoisseur? An expert judge in matters of taste. <laughs> uh, you, you need to be an expert. You need to be a specialist and an arbitrator of taste. Let me see if I can make a plan. I, I, I'm a coffee snob. <clears throat> and I really, 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 really like coffee. Um, and one of my favorite coffees is Ethiopian Sadamo, particularly the sun-dried one. Now, I found out that what we call a coffee bean, coffee bean is actually fruit. It's not a bean, it's fruit. It's the middle. And one of the things that if you know anything about coffee and you drink it black at the right temperature, like this one has lush cherry notes with exotic layers of uh, cacao and spices. Oh, God, I'm, it's amazing. It's amazing. But most people, when they drink coffee, they put in whipped cream. (laughs) 
half and half, vanilla syrup, lavender syrup, cinnamon syrup, chocolate syrup. And I remember one time, I love you, babe. I made, I made an amazing pour over of this coffee. And I was praying that my wife would just pour it and drink it. She goes in the refrigerator and grabs some French vanilla or some hazelnut cream. And she dumped it in my artisan coffee! And I said, babe, you got so much inside the coffee that you can't taste what it really is. But babe, if you would just take some time and let go of the stuff you want to add to it to adjust it to your taste standards, if you would just taste it, don't come get me later, baby, I love you. If you would just taste it the way it was made to be tasted, you'll catch notes that you never knew that was in it. You'll catch flavors that you didn't know was in it. You'll catch enjoyment that you didn't know was in it. I don't know about you, but I don't want no additives and preservatives on my word. I want my word seasoned a little bit with salt and pepper because I want no flavor to get in the way of what God wants to say to me. I want all the anointing the word has for me. I want all the truth the word has for me. I want all the change the word has for me. I want all the exhortations the word has for me. I want all the correction the word has for me. I want all the encouragement that the word has for me. I want all the walk that the word can give me. I want the mind transformation that the word can give me. I want the heart regulation that the word My prayer is this, is that Jesus would help you this way, where you demand healthy teaching, that you don't allow yourself to eat just anything, <laughs> that you would have better discernment, and that you would have hearing standards. Hearing standards. And so Jesus said in the last days that lies will be so cunning that even the elect would be even deceived. He says, but you, you be on your guard. You be on your guard. Peter says, gird your minds for action, family. Listen, we, we, we as the people of God have to grow up and get off cupcakes and ice cream and get on Porcini Delmonico's and porterhouses. We need God to refurbish our taste buds. And I'm glad that we're in the process of that. How many of you in the process of your taste buds being transformed, changed, and upgraded by God's word? Amen? Amen. Every head bow, every eye closed. Maybe you're here today. Maybe you're here today and you... You don't know Jesus. He makes himself available to you. The Bible says, how will they hear without a preacher? What do they need to hear that Christ died for them and got up from the grave on the third day? Rose from the dead. They recognized that Christ took on the wrath of God, the anger of God against our sin, so that we could be transitioned from being under God's wrath to being under his grace. And we would be empowered by him for eternity. But the core of it is coming into a relationship with God. If you're here today, and you never placed your confidence in Jesus, the Son of God, for what we call salvation, but really it means rescuing you from yourself, from the world of the flesh, the devil, but mainly 
God's wrath. If you're here today and you say, I want to say yes to Jesus, hold your hand up in the air. We'd love to talk to you about Jesus. Anyone today that says, I want to say yes to him, hold your hand up real high. Hold your hand up real high. I want to say yes to his will, yes to his way. I see a hand over here to my left. Anybody else? Anybody else? So I want to say yes to his will, yes to his way. He wants to take you from disconnection to connection. That's, that's, he loves that. He loves reconnecting with people. <clears throat> that's what he made us for, for our connection to never be broken with him. And Christ makes that happen. Christ makes it happen. So if you're here today and you want to place your confidence in Jesus, we're here for that. Amen and amen. Let's give God praise for one. Amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> let's uh, get ready for communion. <clears throat> um, if you don't have the elements, hold your hand in the air so that we can get that to you. We have one up here, one right here. One in the back by the sound room. Anybody else? Hold your hand up if you want to partake. We got some in the back right here on the back wall right here. Yes. Anyone else? Anyone else? There's one right here. Amen. Let's stand up. Let's stand up if you can. One of the uh, beautiful things about being in Christ is remembering. 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 Jesus wants us. We take communion as a constant pit stop of reevaluation and memory. And so as we evaluate, I want today just to take one moment to just reflect. Reflect. Self-examine. Self-examine yourself today. First Corinthians 13, 11 says, First Corinthians 11 says, examine yourself that you may take it in a worthy manner. How do you take it worthily? You know that Christ is your means to be worthy. Communion is a time to ask yourself the question, do I take God seriously? But it's also a renewed opportunity to take him seriously until you take it again. Because when you eat his body, you're saying, I want all of who Jesus is in me and through me. Let us eat together. The drink represents his blood. He calls it blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It's to remind you that being in a relationship with Jesus doesn't have an expiration date. That's good news. <laughs> and guess what he's doing? He is fasting from this till he drinks with us when he returns. But one day in heaven, they are going to toast. We're going to toast, hold up our cups as Jesus stands at the right hand of the Father. And he's going to stand for the first time and he's going to hold up his cup of wine. And he said, I've been fasting for millennia so that I can have this moment with my bride. But he says, until then, practice. Let's drink together. Jesus, thank you for giving us all of your life. And it can only be done by you, Jesus. Thank you for your commitment to us and thank you for commitment to truth. Lord, now unto him who is able to do 
exceeding and abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that is at work within us. To him be glory, to him be majesty, to him be power, dominion forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Tamara Bullock, and I'm one of the members of the Surge Evangelism Team, where our goal is to help you look more like Jesus. You can reach us at surge at epiphanyfellowship.org. You can reach out to us if you have any questions about the message, or if you just want to hear about the gospel message of Jesus for the first time. We'd love to hear from you or connect with you. Grace and peace.